Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to welcome you to another prayer and testimony video. Uh, remember, I, I wanted to start a side of the ministry that God let, allowed me to be part of to be about prayer requests and testimonies for brothers and sisters in Christ, for brothers and sisters in Christ. Not mainly, necessarily a testimony, which I don't mind, of how you got saved, but testimonies of how God is doing things in your life, whether you fell into sin and how God brought you back, how God did amazing things for you, blessings. Uh, I can't even count all the blessings. If I was to write down all the blessings God has given me since I got saved, um, I almost want to say all the books in the world could not contain them. But you know when it's talking about Jesus Christ and all the miracles and all the His ministry and what He did. Um, so I kind of wanted to do this part. So this is another video about it. I want to thank the brothers and sisters for their prayers, and I'm sorry this is coming out a little late. I've been just fighting to get other stuff done, and physical stuff that's worldly stuff, and uh, trying to get some videos out there, actual Bible teachings for you, brothers and sisters in Christ. But I thank you, thank you for your prayers. When I did my trip, um, I don't like driving long distances. My testimony video, I've had a seizure, seizure part of my list, seizure, Disorder for nine years, over nine years, uh, back to when I was um, 28. So let's do the math because it's been a while. Uh, 20 years. Uh, no, not 20 years. 28, uh, 10 years. So I'm going on the 10 year mark. Uh, but uh, I don't like long drives. I went eight to nine years without driving, and I've only been driving for two years. So about eight years. Um, so I don't like long drives, I'm still trying to get used to them, and I ask for prayer because I do need prayer, my eyesight's another thing people are praying for, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a lot of times the Lord um, allows me to read more, and then there's those days where I don't clean my glasses, I think that's one of the big things, keeping the glasses clean. Um, my main glasses, I had to go to my backup, that the prescription's a little off. Um, until I can get new ones, but my main glasses, one of the things was is they were scratched. And I don't know how they got scratched to the point where it looked f a little bit foggy. But even before that, uh, uh, my eyesight just seems to keep getting worse. Every time I go in every year to two years to get my eyes examined, they're a little bit worse, a little bit worse. So I thank you for those prayers. God showed me the glasses, and um, hopefully that's one situation that can help ease the reading. But the prayer request for the driving, I said it in one of the other videos and I'll go through it again. Uh, we're going down the highway. We're going from Brookings, you go down to California because that's how you cut through, uh, through Jedediah Smith Park who's on the right, but I can't remember the name of the highway. I take it all the time. But you're heading to Grants Pass and to Medford. So there's parts where the highway will go to three lanes, where your side has a passing lane or their side has a passing lane. And it might have been one of the spots that had four lanes. But bottom line, we are in the passing lane, and uh, my brother was driving, it wasn't me, uh, it was my brake. Um, but he, a red truck, a huge red truck came up on our right. And evidently there was something in the road or there was a bicyclist and he decided he was going to come into our lane to try to go around it. And he started pushing us into the other lane for the on oncoming traffic. And oh my gosh, I, the oncoming traffic that came by, it looked like it was this close uh, between mirrors. And all I could get out was, oh Lord, and I, it happened so quick, I couldn't get the save me part out. Um, remember the story about Apostle Paul, uh, not Paul, Peter, walking across the water. The, mo the moment he started to sink, he screamed out, Lord, save me. And so many other situations in the Bible where people in the, New Te or in the collection of books called the New Testament, but throughout Jesus' ministries where they're asking Jesus to save them. Um, but yeah, it was very close, and I thank you, thank you, brothers and sisters, for your prayers. It's not just a prayer, part of the prayer request, but a testimony that God does answer prayers. Um, I'll show a quick video, too. One of the places we stayed at, 
Um, everything looked kind of nice. There's a lot of vacation rentals today, especially up the coast here in Oregon. And people are turning their homes into rentals. Uh, sometimes it's just the room they're renting out and it's a lot, lot cheaper. Uh, right now, the rate for winter time, winter summertime right here on the coast, it's close to $100 a night. It's like $80 to $100 a night. Uh, they can get up as high as almost $300 a night if you're really close to the beach. And I don't care, I can walk to the beach or drive to the beach. I don't need to be right on the beach. But you can find places for like 50 bucks where you're renting a room out of the house. And uh, so we had a place like that. And I'll do a quick video before I talk about it, but I'll do a quick video showing what I saw. So here it is. So as you saw, very shocking, okay, a picture of Peter, the first pope, and Mary, the statues were kind of hidden in the backyard. So almost like they wanted an evil spirit over the house. So once again, your prayers, um, it was shaky that whole week and a half to two weeks of having family members here and the, uh, being vexed by the sins that they love and trying to keep my home a godly home, which isn't always easy when you have uh, family come in, uh, having the courage to stand up to them, it's not, it's not always easy. But I thank you for your prayers because there definitely was spiritual attacks during my trip. Um, so uh, God does answer prayers. He really does. So I encourage people to continue to uh, email me prayer requests, but a good thing that really helps, because like I said, a big part of my uh, God's ministry through me is encouraging the brethren, and testimonies for brothers and sisters in Christ are very encouraging. And uh, a sister in Christ in the last uh, prayer and testimony video uh, had a great story. Her husband emailed me um, to confirm that testimony, and we're going to read the email real quick. So, we're going to start at the beginning. This is uh, Brother Andy. First of all, I would like to thank you for all the studies you have put out on YouTube. I thank the Lord, too, because if you've realized, I don't have the top-of-the-line equipment or nothing. I've got an old camera, and I do my best with what, what God has given me, and He's allowed me to do really good. So it's not me, it's the Lord, 100%. So, my wife and I have been blessed by the teachings of words have meaning, and I have too. I know I'm the one doing them, uh, doing the videos, but I have been so blessed by um, looking up the meaning of words and comparing them to the Bible in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, making sure the context matches. Uh, right now we're going through uh, repent slash repentance. Uh, the Old Testament word is repent. I haven't come across repentance yet, but I know it's in the New Testament a lot. But going through there, it's opening my eyes too, and I'm learning as you guys are learning with me. So, uh, words have meaning, yes they do, which has encouraged us to start defining words for ourselves even when we think we already know the meaning. Now I believe what he's talking about is you have the lost world, I was a professing Christian for a long time, and you have the lost world professing Christians giving their own definitions. They want it to mean this, so they give their own definitions. Best example is the, uh, the word person. They think a person, if they have a, a will and you know feelings and all this stuff, that's going to be a person. That's not what the Bible defines as a person. A person has a body, soul, and it's always referred to someone who's living, a spirit. Jesus is our lifeline. He gives us a spirit, and He can take that spirit away at any moment. But they try to come up with their own definitions so they can have their own beliefs. They're trying to please themselves, and they're pleasing their flesh. But I believe what He's talking about is what the world's trying to tell them, the wisdom of this world. I know that the Bible talks about that. If you want true wisdom, ask God that giveth liberally. I think that's what it, if I said it correctly. 
um, but they're going off world's wisdom. And as a false, fake Christian, I was told a lot of meanings to words that when I got truly saved, and just recently God really put it on my heart, words have meaning, and I started looking up a lot of words, especially person, and it's really opened my eyes to the fact that I was lied to and deceived. People were giving me their idea of what the word meant, not the context of the Bible and what the Bible says the word means. So, not that they're trying to make up their own definitions like the lost world. I just let, wanted to throw that in there. I also would like to let you know that you were correct on the picture you showed during the prayer and testimony video. The crucifix did portray the Jesus figure with the two fingers like the photo you showed. I showed a little square photo, I'm not going to show it again, only because I do believe we're to abstain from all appearance of evil, and I understand for witnessing, for testimonies, for teachings, every once in a while you might have to throw something up like that, but I don't want to be throwing it up left and right, okay? But, uh... It showed um, their version of God the Father as an old man and Jesus, their lowercase g, God uh, the Son, because it's not God the Son, it's Jesus Christ who is God, only one capital G, God the Father. So you have Jesus and they have a dove, so they're side by side and they have a dove above them as re representing the Holy Spirit, which isn't the Holy Spirit at all, it's a satanic thing. But they had their fingers in a certain gesture that was satanic. So just giving you an update on that. This whole time that we had it, we had never paid any attention to it. Brother and other brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I can testify with you. My Holy Spirit can bear witness with your Holy Spirit. I come across stuff in my house that I didn't know was wicked at one time, and God convicts me through other brothers and sisters in Christ, through teachings from other brothers in Christ, or through testimonies, which is why this is so important, of other brothers and sisters in Christ. And I start going, wait a minute, I have something like that in my house. Or um, God will hit me up saying, you know what? We need to stop taking things at face value. We need to start researching. We need to start looking things up, especially when it comes to the Word of God. But I had those plates that had those two dogs on it from um, Okinawa, and I'm thinking, eh, it's just two dogs, it's no big deal. And I've had that plate for a long, long time. But I already told that story. But when you look up, the dogs are, are supposed to be spirits that protect the home. They're wicked spirits. I had something satanic in my home. So I can testify to you having something and not realizing it. God's like, you know what? He'll convict you with the Holy Spirit. I have never told my wife how I really felt about it because I knew it was sentimental to her. Now, as we get further down, brother in Christ, I'm not, please don't take this as a condemning, take this as an exhortation. Um, the Apostle Paul, because he'll ask some questions about marriage, the Apostle Paul told us and warned us the reason I believe he said about better to be single is one of the temptations for a husband out there is to please his wife above pleasing the Lord. He gets so, because I... I'm going through courtship right now. I want to please my wife, my future wife. I love her so much. But i got to realize that I need to make sure to hold this above her. And she agrees with me. To hold the Word of God above her. And not always fall into the trap of pleasing your wife when it goes against the Word of God. So I'm not condemning you, brother. I'm just exhorting you that, hey... Um, because we're going to keep, we're going to keep going. Because you finally got the courage, and realized you need to tell her how you feel. Ver next sentence: I had never told my wife how I really felt about it because I knew it was sentimental to her. Her father passed away when she was eight years old by suicide, so I didn't feel right asking her to get rid of it. So instead, I asked her to put it away. After we watched the graven image video, she took it out of her drawer and brought it to me. So. I kind of said that wrong, but, you know, brother in Christ, you need to focus, and I know your wife would agree, to realize that you need, you want to please your wife in every way possible. And I told uh, the sister in Christ that I'm wanting to marry and be my wife, that I will please her in every way possible as long as it doesn't go against the Word of God. Am I going to fail sometimes? Yeah. Uh, that's one of the warnings the Apostle Paul gave us. Okay? 
the first thing I noticed were Jesus' fingers positioned in a satanic gesture like the photo you showed. That's when I told her that it was time to get rid of it and was surprised that she agreed. You know what that's called? That's called the Holy Spirit bearing witness with the Holy Spirit and somebody else. Okay, they bear witness between the two of them, husband and wife, and they both agreed to get rid of it. Which is when, like she wrote, we cleaned house. I like that statement. I'll probably start using it more, Andy. Uh, thank your wife and thank you. Um, I'm always talking about your home is the only place that can be a godly home. I mean, godly place as far as um, abstaining from all appearance of evil. Uh, being able to, you know, be free from temptation. You're still going to be tempted, but I'm talking about it's the only place that you can, you know, where the temptations are at their least. Uh, it's only when you go out into this world that you're really vexed and tempted. So I like that. Cleaned house. So it's time to feed brothers and sisters. One of my uh, main points of this ministry is to encourage the brethren. And one of the big things I encourage you brothers and sisters in Christ out there is to clean house. Uh, sanctification. The Bible says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Um, what is it? Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Stay in the word of God, and keep feeding your spirit, and putting down the flesh, and the sanctification is going to come. Okay? We need to clean the house. That includes me. I'm always coming across something every so many months. God uh, convicts me of something. Your house is never going to be 100% perfect. Every once in a while you might bring something in unknowingly, and every once in a while you come across something like they did, brothers and sisters in Christ, like I did with some of my uh, souvenirs from overseas. Got to be careful and always clean house, sanctification. And got rid of other graven images, praise the Lord, throughout our home and children's toys. One of the big things about that study I did was is that the Bible condemns making images of the Godhead. The Old Testament says you're not to make any images of things in heaven or things in earth. Is God the Father in heaven? Yeah. Are you supposed to make images of God the Father? No. Period. And if you want to look at all the scriptures to back that up, you can go watch the graven images study. Um, but I had to get rid of a lot of magazines. I went through some old Bibles I've been collecting, and if I could rip out the pictures, I do. Um, one I marked over, just had a little square picture, but it was an encyclopedia of the Bible, um, King James. And uh, sometimes it had pictures on one side and verses on the other, and I just had to throw the, the Bible out because they put wickedness in with the Bible. Because a lot of times it was the long-haired Jesus, uh, Satan, the Antichrist that will be showing up, the fake Jesus. I do believe Jesus is capital G God, but he is not lowercase g God, the Son. Okay. There's only one God, the Father. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. So, they got rid of other graven images throughout the home and children's toys. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm doing the same thing, and I'm continuing every once in a while to walk around the house, pray, and say, hey, is there anything I have to give up? Um, but let's get to the questions. So, that's a great testimony, again, about the Holy Spirit bearing witness with someone else's Holy Spirit. And this, and this thing, it's amazing because it's husband and wife, and that's how it should be between a husband and wife. Um, Brother Philip. I have some questions regarding marriage that have been on my mind for some time. I'm not sure how to word this question, but here it goes. Do you think marriage was only intended for saved people? Um, no. I think uh, over time, and like I said, I might do a study. I kind of want to do a study. I'm in the middle of uh, courtship, and I'm hoping to be have a God-fearing, Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian woman at my side very soon as my wife and I've already been looking into a lot of stuff, my responsibilities, um, what I'm supposed to do, it goes back to that thing when I, we've talked a lot about the Bible and how this is a godly home and she wants to help me keep it a godly home and we want to serve the Lord together. Um, so uh, I do believe it was intended for everybody but I think over time it was perverted. Now notice we're talking about marriage, not fornication, not committing adultery, not sodomy. 
we're talking about marriage. And yes, today marriage is being prefer perverted by sodomy because it's not marriage. But they're trying to tell them they can get married and it's marriage. It's not. Okay? It's not true marriage. But um, uh, it's not good for man to be alone in Genesis. Uh, the woman was made for man. Um, uh, be fruitful and multiply. And over time, it uh, wasn't till you know, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that there was a specific set of people that God was dealing with and actually spelling out this is how it's supposed to be because the world has gotten so perverted. So the good question to ask yourself, Andy, Brother Andy, and anybody else is, are Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian men the only ones who are truly married and or do marriage correctly? Um, there's a lot of people that get married based off the flesh, which I understand the Bible teaches that that's one of the big reasons to get married. Um, when a brother and sister talk a lot, pray for each other, they talk about the Bible, and they have that physical attraction. Um, that's the, the burning that the Bible's, uh, that Paul's talking about. Um, so, yes, that's part of it, but when there's no spirit, spiritual application, um, there's no... Um, you know, that you're, you know, both of you being Bible believing, God fearing men and women. But this is a good study to do. But I believe that, yes, I believe Bible believing, God fearing uh, Christian men and women are doing it right. Uh, not everybody, okay, but for the most part, I believe what few of us are out there trying to do it right. That's why a lot of sisters in Christ are still seeking men because they're not going to compromise. They need to have some grace. When it comes to sanctification, I need to have grace. My future wife needs to have grace for me when it comes to sanctification. And um, the fact that we're not perfect, but when it comes to our stands for the King James Bible, all the major doctrines, uh, seeing the, making sure that there's a changed life, okay, you're not compromising. So it's kind of hard because there's very few of us out there and we're so spread out and it's hard to see the changed life when you're spread out. So, next question, has marriage been counterfeited, perverted, just like everything else, such as music, church buildings? Uh, church buildings, real quick, were never perverted. Uh, they were never based off scripture. They were Catholic in origin from, uh, and pagan from origin. Now, there was buildings where people did it and innocently with good intentions. But at any point, when you do a building and you call that building a church, it was perverted from the very beginning. It was destined to fail. That's why we got so many false converts in these Babel buildings. Uh, Christianity, uh, false converts, absolutely. Counterfeit Bibles, all these Bible perversions, absolutely. Um, has marriage been counterfeit or perverted? Absolutely, like I said, going all the way back, oh gosh, um, to Babylon, um, back to uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Uh, uh, Noah, and uh, even before that, uh, how the world got so bad, but I only go back to Noah because they were washed away, but it didn't stop it. It's still over time, uh, marriage was counter uh, was perverted. And the counterfeit, I believe, is why I tell brothers and sisters in Christ to stay away from movies, TV shows, video games, uh, a lot of the commercials nowadays. I don't have cable, praise the Lord. And they're all trying to impose on the world saying this is what marriage is when it's not. It's a counterfeit. So yes, marriage has been counterfeited and perverted. I'm just doing a quick walk through. Like I said, I'd love to do a big study and I have it on my list of studies when the God when God really pushes me because I've got other studies I'm working on and want to get them out. Um, I will get to it. I'm always doing a little bit of studies here and there. And I'll come back to them and add more and then I'll come back to them and add more. Uh, your feedback will be much appreciated. Thank you, brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Sincerely, Andy. Brother Andy. Um, I've had a request for uh, communion studies. Now I have a request for study on marriage. And um, some of these, when I do courageous man, foolish man, I don't do it overnight, but I'm able to do the study and then come back to it the next day and go over it a couple times and get it out there to encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ when it comes to your walk with the Lord. But when it comes to big things like uh, communion is simple. I mean, it's not big, but you always want to back it with Scripture. Uh, I think it's Ephesians 5, talks about the changed life. 
and um, communion is all about basically reflecting on your life, you know, cleaning house, but not just cleaning physical things, but spiritual things, you know, am I lined up with the Lord, His Word? Um, do I believe everything that's supposed to be right? Um, am I doing right? Am I living for the Lord? True love for Jesus Christ is keeping His written word. It's not a feeling in your heart. It's an act of your will. Are you keeping God's perfect written word? It's a changed life. Uh, oh gosh, I wish I... Um, it's in the book of John, but where Jesus said, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. In other words, you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. After salvation, it's talking about your, not before, but after salvation, it's talking about a changed life. Um, and that's what communion is about. Um, just keep going over your life, constantly sanctifying your life. But I would like to do a study on it. Um, uh, you know, how it's supposed to be done, in the sense it's not specific, like you have to have, like the Catholic Church perverts it, and a lot of these... Uh, Babel buildings perverted. Um, it's not some huge ceremony. I mean, Jesus did it in private with his 12 disciples, and uh, he did it in a personal way, you know, not something like it was sacred. He did it in a personal way. That's why he had his apron on. He's washing their feet. He's breaking the bread. He's eating with them. Um, yeah, he did it as a personal thing. That's why I believe communion is a one on one personal thing between you and the Lord. And when you get married, though, you become one flesh, so it's also a personal thing between, for both you and your wife together to the Lord. So you have your separate walk, you have your walk spiritually, and it's together at the same time, because like I, I was talking before, I think I mentioned this, um, you're going to please your wife, but the what your wife does, I think I left this out, when your wife does something that's sinful, strays from the Word of God, in a lot of physical ways, uh, the husband has to pay for it also. He has to go through it with her and vice versa. You know, my biggest thing I always thought is financially, uh, your husband or your wife runs out and buys a $50,000 car, now you're stuck with that $50,000 debt. So, it comes down to, you know, you have to do communion together with your wife. You should always do communion with your wife. Um, but that's what it's all about. But to do the study, I want to make sure I'm using Scripture and I'm basing everything off Scripture and not my point of view. Same thing when I'm talking about marriage and answering these questions. I'd like to do a study to back it up. So, I just want to thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ, for your prayers. Um, I'm praying for you. Thank you for this testimony, Andy, and thank your wife for her testimony on the same thing. But this is amazing. But Holy Spirit bearing witness with the Holy Spirit. And you guys, I'm so proud of you and encouraged by you that it's not just me that's coming across uh, things in, our, in my home still, you are too, and that you're throwing this stuff out and you're doing be your best to please the Lord uh, over pleasing anybody here. It goes for the wife too, to please the Lord uh, more than you're pleasing your husband. Pleasing the Lord always comes first. But um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father be with you and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, one God, capital G, the Father, and one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. So I'll see you in the next video.